Hi everybody, welcome to my demonstration on Celestia. Celestia is a very cool program you can get free at home and it is a scale model of the universe and it lets you play with a number of parameters so you can see things. And one of the things it lets you do is play with time. What you're seeing right now is you're seeing our sun and it's moving in real time and it really doesn't look like it's moving at all. But if I go ahead and speed the time rate up and ask it to sync correctly, you can see that the sun starts to move just like the earth or rotate just like the earth does. Now this is much faster than it normally does because Celestia lets me speed that up. But this would be our sun, our own sun here named Saul. And I'll go ahead and slow this back down to a normal time rate. And it'll look again like it's standing still because it takes about 25 days for that to spin around. So it's not going to spin much when we're just looking at it here. At any rate, we want to do we want to cover three important words on this uh, presentation today that are going to be your vocab words one is rotation which you actually just saw and i'll show you again one is revolution and the other one is the orbital plane now i'm going to go ahead and back off here a little bit and i'm going to speed time up again so that we can see some motions that normally take a long time to do and you can see some of these little objects in the side if you follow the cursor right now. These are actually our planets. So if I, if I display, I want to go to labels, I'll tell the planets that I want to see their names. And now we can see some of those moving around. And if I want to even get fancier, I can go ahead and I can display the orbits of the planet. And it shows me them in blue rings. And I can back off a little bit and I can tilt it, and we're looking at what's called a north polar view right now. And with just the inner rocky planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, if I speed it up, you can see that they all move around the sun in the same direction. And this is an example of a revolution. A revolution is one body going around another. And right now, all of the planets are revolving around the sun. So we call the revolution of the Earth is one year because it takes one Earth year, or 365 days for the Earth to go around the sun. And of course, it's different depending on, uh, diff if you're on a different planet, that changes. We don't all have the same length year. The other thing I'd like you to, but that's an example of a revolution. The other thing I'd like to show you is when I tilt this, all those orbits pretty much line up. They're all pretty even. And that also is true if I back out to see the orbits of the outer gas planets. So here's Neptune and the like. And I've got to really speed these up a bunch. But when I do, again, they're all from a north polar view going counterclockwise. But this is, again, all examples of planet revolutions. They're going around the sun. So I'll slow this back down. And I'm, and I'm going to tilt it. And once again, you see that all these line up like they're all almost on a table. And that lining up is what we call the orbital plane. All the planets line up pretty much along this orbital plane. We don't have them just scattered all around. And this is why Pluto got kicked out of the planet family because it is not on this same orbital plane. You also see how small the sun is from this view way out here, and hopefully you're starting to get the idea of why the Earth gets hit with light rays from the sun that are parallel. If we move this and we think of the light beams coming off this point source of light in every direction like spokes on a wheel, by the time they get out here and hit Earth, they're going to be very, very parallel when they hit Earth. And we're going to hit that concept again in just a moment. But again, our our second one we did is our orbital plane, and this is like the imaginary line or tabletop that all of the planets kind of sit on, and that makes the orbital plane. So now we're here at the Earth, and again, we're on a north polar view. You can see the United States over here and Europe and the like, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start speeding up time again, and when I do that, now we can see our third word. And this is an example of a rotation. We did revolution, and that's where they're both kind of spinning words, 
but a rotation is an uh, uh, object spinning on its own axis, meaning like a, an imaginary point there or line that runs through the planet that it spins around. And if I speed this up, you can see it's also from a North Polar view, also rotating counterclockwise. Now I'm gonna speed this way, way up. And what I'd like you to pay attention to is the shadow or the dark side right here because this is happening in real time. So this is kind of where we're at here in April when I'm making this movie. But I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up and we're gonna go over the course of a full year. And as we go through the year, you're gonna watch all of a sudden that shadow now is completely covering the North Pole. All, every 24 hour period. That's how long it takes the Earth to rotate once on its axis. And during the winter time, the North Pole is completely dark this entire time the light never ever gets to the North Pole. As a matter of fact, it never even gets inside what's called the Arctic Circle. If I move to summer, on the first day of summer, we have total sunlight at the North Pole. It's, we have a rotation again that makes a day and never once does the North Pole come out of the light. And that's because of the tilt of the Earth and the seasons and we'll be talking a lot about that. But the big thing I want you to take away from this is the idea of a rotation. So I'm gonna slow back down to real time again, and I'm going to view a display. I wanna go ahead and see the orbit of our moon. And I wanna do this to make, once again, a point. So I'm gonna go ahead and start coming out of here, and we can't even see the moon yet. But now, the orbit of the moon comes into view. So this is gonna be an example of if we take just the Earth rotating like a minute ago, that's spinning around, that's a rotation, as the moon moves around the Earth here, and once again in a kind of counterclockwise fashion, you can kind of see it go right there, it, this is a revolution because the moon is going around the Earth. So we'll uh, slow that down. The real thing I wanted to show on this, though, was the relationship of the Earth and the moon to light. Oh, I don't want to do that. And so what I want to do is I want to, I want to start panning out. And what's happening is that I move away in space. I'm getting so far away right now that the Earth and the moon are almost starting to look like the same point in space. This was a much bigger circle a minute ago. And by the time I move out far enough, to where I can actually even start seeing some of the other orbits of Mars and Venus, virtually the Earth and the Moon look like they're a single point on this whole thing. And I want to bring this far enough back to where we can actually see the Earth and the Sun in one frame. And so I'm going to go ahead and move this in. And remember, this little point right here now that says Earth we're so far out, that's actually both the Earth and the orbit of the Moon together. And here is our point source of light for the Sun. Once again, when the light comes over here, it's hitting both the Earth and the Moon in parallel lines. And that is going to be very important to understand when we start talking about the Moon. So it not only hits the Earth in straight parallel lines, it hits the Moon and the Earth in straight parallel lines. So, what we really wanted to do on this were the three things. Our three things we wanted to learn was the difference between a revolution, which is one object going around another celestial object, a rotation, which is simply an object spinning on its own like a top around an imaginary line called an axis through the middle, and the final thing we wanted to see was that all the planets basically line up on an orbital plane or a flat surface. They aren't just around willy-nilly. There is a pattern to how they work and that straight line that they go through is the orbital plane. All right, thanks for watching.